Welcome to the Caro Show channel. In 2014, the creation of Chinese artificial islands began in the South China Sea. In just one year, Chinese engineers managed to create several land areas with a total area of more than four square kilometers. The construction of such an island begins with geological exploration. Specialists study the topography of the seabed and select suitable uplands. These can be submerged islands, underwater rocks or coral reefs. Only after that building materials are brought to the selected site. This includes special concrete intended for hydrotechnical structures. Then special machines lift the sand from the seabed and spray it in the chosen direction until a sufficiently high area of land is formed. China washes giant sand masses on reefs and shoals, artificially increasing the number of islands. China's Asian rivals see this activity as an attempt to take over the entire South China Sea. The Chinese have been involved in creating artificial islands before, for example near Guangzhou. New land areas were needed solely to increase the land area of the country. Now, behind engineering solutions, there are quite specific geopolitical tasks, such as control over the Paracel Islands. Formally, both archipelagos are considered neutral territory, but six states are fighting for the right to possess them at once. China, Vietnam, the Philippines, Brunei, Taiwan, and Malaysia. Every year through this part of the ocean, various kinds of goods worth more than three trillion dollars move in one direction or another. The sea route connecting the Far East and Southeast Asia with the Indian subcontinent, Africa, the Middle East and Europe was established historically, and its strategic value has only grown with the development of trade. But the importance of the South China Sea lies not only in its transit role. According to the Chinese authorities, its waters hold phenomenal hydrocarbon reserves that have not yet begun to be exploited. Although oil was first discovered there in 1968, estimates of the possible volume of hydrocarbons vary. The Ministry of Geology and Mineral Resources of China claims it could be as much as 18 billion barrels of oil, although other sources indicate the hydrocarbon potential of the sea is more modest, ranging from 1.1 billion to 11 billion. The third factor determining the importance of the South China Sea is its use as a food source. Seafood has always played a key role in the region's traditional cuisine, and the waters here are particularly rich in it. The economies of most countries in the region are directly dependent on the smooth functioning of trade lines across the South China Sea. For example, Japan receives about 80% of all energy imports through the South China Sea. The figures concerning the People's Republic of China are also impressive. About 60% of the country's total foreign trade is tied to this part of the world ocean, and therefore the attention that China pays to it and its role there is logical and understandable. On the one hand, China is trying to diversify the logistics of its exports by developing both land and combined deliveries of its goods to the most important areas for its economy. On the other hand, Beijing, of course, is not going to refuse sea transportation, investing in foreign ports in strategically important parts of the world. The 21st Century Maritime Silk Road, which includes long-term infrastructure initiatives in which China is ready to invest billions of dollars, is a key component of their well-known plan, One Belt, One Road. In this regard, ensuring its own security in the South China Sea has become a matter of principle for the country. But the main means for this has become a number of disputed territories that have existed in these waters for decades. Of course, the existence of several archipelagos of small islands, atolls, or even just coral reefs in different parts of the sea was no secret to anyone. However, all these Parasol Islands and the Spratly Islands, barely protruding from the water, covered with sand and shrubs, acquired real value only in the 20th century. In May 1939, they were occupied by the Japanese Empire, using some of them for military purposes. After the defeat of Japan in World War II, realizing the growing importance of these 250 patches of land, the total area of the Spratly is less than 5 square kilometers, and the Parasol Islands, 7.8 square kilometers. The countries of the region became seriously interested in them. The problem was that their status and ownership were not settled after World War II. Against the background of the just-ended planetary conflict, these territories seemed too insignificant, but it soon became clear that they were ready not only to argue for them, but even to fight for them. In the second half of the 20th century, the states surrounding the South China Sea found themselves in tense relations with each other. On one side was China, a country that was building communism, but had fallen out with the second center of power in this ideology, the Soviet Union. And on the other side in the orbit of influence was Vietnam, united after the end of the Vietnam War. The Philippines was an American ally. Indonesia at various times in its history sympathized with either the socialist camp or the world of capitalism. 
Malaysia's ambitions also grew as it developed rapidly economically. There was also the factor of Taiwan, which China has always considered an integral part of. Against this background, it is not surprising that it was in the South China Sea, with all its islands, that it was not clear who belonged, that the interests of regional states, as well as the superpowers behind them, clashed. The only country that could afford to claim almost all the islands was China. In its policy in the South China Sea, the People's Republic of China was guided by the so-called Nine Dash Line. The origins of the Nine Dash Line can be traced back to the mid-20th century. The line first appeared on a map published by the Republic of China government in 1947, which was then under the leadership of the Kuomintang Party. The Nine Dash Line is a demarcation line used by the People's Republic of China to claim territorial sovereignty and maritime rights over a vast portion of the South China Sea. It consists of a series of connected dashes or line segments that enclose an area encompassing roughly 90% of the South China Sea. China's neighbors in the region had their own opinion on this matter. Vietnam claimed part of the Paracel Islands. The Philippines, Malaysia, the same Vietnam and even Brunei claimed the Spratly Islands. In 1974, the matter even came to an armed conflict between China and South Vietnam, which was on the verge of defeat in its war with the Communist North. The result of ship skirmishes, during which there were human casualties, was the establishment by the People's Republic of China of control over a number of disputed territories. For a long time, China lagged behind in the military development of the controlled islands, limiting itself to the organization of observation posts and the presence of small garrisons. But in the 2010 there was a fundamental change in China, at its usual pace in 2013, moved to actively convert these pieces of land into bases, which were designed to ensure control over the entire sea area. The size of most of the islands that China inherited did not allow for any large-scale construction. Many of them were coral reefs. But by Chinese standards, this was a modest challenge to the country's engineering capabilities. <coughs> Essentially, China embarked on a significant expansion of the territories under its control. The algorithm was very simple. With the help of special ships, sand was taken from the bottom of the South China Sea, which was sent through a pipe system to the desired island, where it was used to create new square meters of the required additional area. The official reason for the creation of such lands was to improve the working and living conditions of the people living on the islands. It was supposed that with the help of the newly created infrastructure, it would be provided shelter, navigation assistance, better weather forecast for the fishermen and sailors of the merchant fleet. At the same time, convenient deep harbors were created, the coasts were strengthened against storms and typhoons, and three full-fledged airfields were built in a short time. Hundreds of vessels were involved in the work, and the flagship was the giant Shen Jinghao, Asia's largest dredger. The result was impressive. Only on the seven reefs, where the most active work was carried out, the Chinese have washed 13.5 square kilometers of additional land, which was comparable to the total area of the two largest archipelagos, Spratly and Parasol. The humanitarian aspects of creating such a colossal infrastructure most likely were only of additional importance. Thanks to this project, China first of all received new naval bases, including those of military importance. Experts who have analyzed the available satellite images claim that the alluvial territories contain not only the airfields mentioned above, but also communication centers, radars, air defense systems, as well as missile attack warning systems. It is obvious that thanks to these largely artificial islands, China expects to secure its trade routes in case of possible military and political crisis. Considering that the South China Sea plays a key role for the economy of the entire planet, according to experts, up to a quarter of all world trade somehow passes through it. The issue is already becoming global. That is why China's initiatives are of concern to the powers that are now generally considered to be China's adversaries. In September 2021, AUKUS, an alliance of Australia, Britain and the United States, was created. Within its framework, as it is supposed, Australia will be able to build its own nuclear submarine fleet, and the alliance itself is positioned as an instrument of deterrence of Chinese activity in the area of the South China Sea. China, on the contrary, protests against the emergence of AUKUS, and seems to continue to develop territories with might and main, despite their still controversial status. Vietnam is also engaged in similar activities, only on a more modest scale. As usual, nature has suffered most from all these geopolitical maneuvers, but the fate of destroyed coral reefs against the background of what is happening in the world worries only ecologists. Other people of good will can only hope that the mutual demonstration of weapons the U.S. regularly and defiantly sends its warships to the waters of the South China Sea, 
will not lead to another hotbed of international tension on the world map. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe.